Okay, yes it is. It's a Friday. And man, March 26th, the month is just blazing by and it's fantastic as there's optimism in the in the air. I'm in one of my favorite places to be and that's saddling up in a nice open air kitchen with a counter and counter service around. And look at this, I've got the great distinct honor and privilege to be catching up with my friend and yours, Chef Alif Swiggins at Cattivella. We're in your backyard, it's your hometown, hey, it's your turf, how are you? So good to have you and see you, I'm doing great. Oh my God, look You're at this You're coming pizza. through it, I know, I know. Friday at Cattivella. We're making this, uh, our prosciutto pizza, starting off with a little garlic and olive oil base. Then um, some fontina, you know, it's springtime coming. So we like to do a, li a lighter pizza. And uh, this is a, a Napolitana dough. So very, very thin crust. Then we've got prosciutto. Ooh. Yeah, you can't go wrong with that. So it's, you know, I like to do the, the garlic and olive oil base with this because it really helps you taste the prosciutto and let it shine, you know. Paper and thin. Then paper, paper thin. Th then it it crisps up and concentrates the the flavors as it cooks um, in the oven, and then concentrates that that salt so you get that prosciutto salt pop. Now I'm gonna go in here, hot oven. Now a lot of people are saying right now, you guys are teasing me. It's a Friday. I'm looking for something to do. I need to go eat somewhere. You're open. You're open for business. We are. We open. We uh, start happy hour at 4 o'clock, and um, happy hour goes from 4 to 6. And then we do uh, regular dinner service, but our happy hour is very popular, as Hap you can imagine. Yeah, happy hour. So yeah. what's the address? So the address for Katzi Bell is 10195 East 29th Drive. Suite 110, Denver, Colorado, 80238. You can't miss us. It's the girl with the flaming hair, a.k.a. Naughty Girl. That's what Katzi Bella means. Five years ago, I tried to get that information out of you, and, and it gave up a lot of information, but it wasn't the address, and it wasn't the name. And we've got some of that interview <laughs> that you and I are just going to kind of thumb through and talk about here in the next segment. But right now, it's all about food, Chef Elise. Can you talk to us about the menu, and do you mind if I sneak around there? Because yeah. Zuri's here with us as well. Yeah, absolutely. Come on around. So the menu is reflected of all my many travels in Italy and studying with various chefs and farmers and butchers and, you know, cheese producers and um, bringing all that knowledge back here to Denver into Cattivella. And my goal has always been to bring different dishes that are from Italy that people just don't really know about. Um, and because there's so many wonderful food that's in Italy that people just don't know about and I, I want to expose them to it. Um, but right here we have a Napolitana um, pizza oven. It's authentic. It's an acunto. Um, and then, of course, the Napolitana dough. Um, so that's what we're doing right now is an authentic pizza. Now, you're kind of manipulating that around your oven. That you're finding you're where you want the heat to be, right? Yeah, and so that's one thing is that you really raise your game on being able to cook and really feel, I call feeling the food because you got a fire. Your heat is really banking hot from one side, and, yes, it radiates around the top of the dome and onto the floor, but you're really having to control, you know, the, the cooking of the pizza because of that fire. So you have to rotate it. What are you and looking for right now? The color. So if yep. you look at the color on the outside, so look oh. at that beautiful stuff. <laughs> and uh, so it's got a nice, beautiful color. And then also if you look at the bottom, see the spots? Those are called uh -huh. leopard spots. And those are indicative of a Napolitana pizza dough. So now I'm going to take it. I'm going to swing this way. Whoops. Let me get the tray out. Okay. Sorry we're teasing everybody, you guys. But you can come get your own pizza for yourself for sure. Uh, but talk to us more about this pizza and what we're seeing here. Yeah, can I get the arugula? Thank you. All right. All right. So, you know, for this one, again, we're just... And, and the secret to Italian cuisine, what I've been taught from all the chefs that I work with, it's simple, you know, really good ingredients and let them shine. So we have this very simply here and then now we're gonna toss a little bit of arugula with some extra virgin olive oil. Yes, chef. And uh, just a tiny, tiny bit of, of salt. And then when we get closer to spring, we actually put grilled asparagus on this. 
but right now we're not quite there. We're getting close to spring, but not quite there. But I'm gonna go ahead and cut. Mamma mia. Exacto. Sorry about that. And then, then we just spread a little bit of the arugula around. And so it's just that nice spicy pop. You know, arugula just grows wild mm -hmm. everywhere in Italy. And, uh, and, and asparagus also wild everywhere on the hillsides. And so just absolutely delicious. And then the last thing we do, this outside, this fluffy part, it's called the cornicione, the crown. And the Italians consider this really the prize. It's like almost like the after savory dessert. And that's our prosciutto pizza. So that's you, gonna go lovely with the Pinot Grigio that we're gonna try later ooh, on. Oh, you know it is. So what did I learn here? What I learned is color is everything. Uh, it working it in your oven so you're finding those sweet spots, letting the ingredients speak for themselves, and just having standout ingredients that really complement each other nicely. So absolutely, absolutely. The final thing, and again, the Italians do, and I know I've already put a lot of extra virgin olive oil, but they put extra virgin olive oil on everything, pasta, pizza, everything. It's just, and it's a finishing oil. So. All right, do what we do, share this stream. Hey, will you put hold, picture time? Thank you, chef. Fantastic. Now that is people love taking pictures of the food the, oh. food the food and the story of the presentation speaks volumes for the food makes it even taste better yeah I, well, I agreed agreed so one of the things through our many conversations that you've talked to me about is culture and people and very important and how do you get guests to come back how do you get people to want to work for you you've cultivated teams many many times Yes. How's the team here at Catavella? It's amazing. So, you know, Zuri's been with me almost 10 years. Sosa, my other sous chef right beside him, has been with me 17 years, Sosa? Yes. 17 wow. years. Um, and so, long, long time. That is definitely, these are my secret weapons. <laughs> but I will tell you, it's never been easy. You know, when I first went down to Panzano's, it took me five years to build the team. Yes. Five years. Um, and Sosa was part of the original part of that team. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, it's a kiss and a lot of toads. But then when you find those princes, oh, you've got to hold I on, know. Hold, hold tight, on, hold tight. You know? yep. And at the same time, you've got brands within your brands. And you were a brand within Paisano's as well. Yep. And, and then right here, you have Chef Siri. And, and give me your name one more time. Sosa. Sosa. Got, got it. Everybody, everybody call me Sosa. Got, you got it. Easy pronunciation, yeah. Talk about these gentlemen and let's watch them cook just a yeah, little bit absolutely. if you don't mind. So, again, Suri just recently promoted him. It should have happened a long time ago, but he's now my <laughs> chef de cuisine. Um, so, again, he started with me as a cook and worked his way up and now sous chef. And, of course, now he's dominating the kitchen. And then the same thing for Sosa. Um, again, the other sidekick, both of them came from, you know, my other restaurant. We won't mention the name. Um, but, uh... Not because I don't like them, but it's just because yeah. competition. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, um, yeah, so these guys are all super amazing. And Zuri is about to show you, we're about to roll out spring menu. So he's going to show you our Carbonara Moderna, our modern Carbonara. All right. Zuri? So for the Carbonara. So First of all, hey, Zuri. Hey, how are Big you? Big fan of you Thank as you well, coming. man. It is so good to see you. No problem. So for the Carbonara, we're going to use some spaghetti. Um, with Kobe, we find uh, with Kobe, we find now that we have to use everything that we have in the restaurant, yep. right? And so these carbonara is inspired on that. Plus, we already have a badass carbonara. We just got inspired to make it one even better. So it has prosciutto pomodoro, which is our made of the skins of the pomodoro and tomato tops. So basically, we infuse the tomato with those skins into their soft, and then we blend them. So we infusing a lot of flavor on that. And we make our own enduia, which is Italian spicy sausage. So everything, all the knobs from the top of the prosciutto, we save. And then we grind all together with Calabria and chili, oregano, and extra virgin olive oil. And those flavors are just amazing. You'll see when you taste it. That's fantastic. Yes. Jay's going to stay back here with you. I'm going to head back over with Chef Elise yeah. here. And we're going to do what most people love to do and just watch from the seating into the kitchen. So take it away, Zuri. All right. We'll do a fry egg, sunny side up. Got some pasta cooking. Mm -hmm. 
jump in and give us the play-by-play -play if you want sure. to, at least. One, and one thing to mention also is that we make all our pastas in-house. And, uh, you know, some people um, have dietary restrictions, and so we're able to flex with a lot of that. Uh -huh. So this spaghetti that we made is, um, you know, egg-free. And... Um, wow. But uh, some of our other pasta dishes, again, like our pappardelle, um, that is with egg. So it makes it richer. Definitely different textures. Uh -huh. there's, there's never like one recipe for pasta. Sure. Depending on the region, depending on the flours that you use, um, it's all very different. But yeah, we wanted to make sure, you know, when we get prosciutto, we get whole legs and it comes with skin on. And then by the time you slice it down, there's nothing but a nub left at the bottom and it's really kind of twisted up. Um, but Italians, one of the many things that I've learned studying with the chefs is that they use everything, the skin and everything. So if you shave the skin off, yes, you can put it into, say, beans or something like that for flavor. But if you let it sit long enough, such as in a tomato sauce, it becomes gelatin and acts as a thickener. And so <laughs> we use that for this modern um, carbonara. We take our pomodoro sauce or our, our, our tomato sauce. We add the skins in there and let them sit and simmer for hours. Then it becomes like this big jelly thing. Wow. We blend it really fine. You would have no idea that there's actually skin in there because it just dissolves. Wow. But the flavor of the prosciutto is so pronounced. Unbelievable. Um, and it makes me sick when I hear about people throwing skins away or throwing the uh -huh. nubs away. And I'm like, oh my goodness, there's so many things you can do with it. It's so important not only just to have a sustainable business model of a zero waste or, or the little waste as possible, but there's a lot of flavor in them. There. Oh, there's a ton of flavor. And when I do cooking classes, which is something we were just talking about, uh -huh. right now those aren't happening because of COVID. Um, and I'm hoping that we can change that real soon. But um, and I, I literally give, we have so many skins because we go through so much prosciutto that I give skins away to my class. Um, so they use it. And I, I also encourage them to get legs of prosciutto and split it with neighbors um, because it's just so much better than getting it pre-sliced in a package, you know? Give us a, some other ideas of some cross-utilization within your kitchen that you're able to use to cut down on waste and to enhance flavors. Yeah, so we save all the stems from our, our fresh herbs. So, and then when we use that, we bundle that sometimes to put inside our herby pomodoro versus the fresh herbs. Uh -huh. Because those stems have so much oil in them, all that flavor is in there. And so many times people are picking it and they just throw the stems away. I'm just like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know? And especially even for us, like sometimes I like to throw them into the, the pizza oven, the fire, uh -huh. or on the grill. Um, because the, you know, that, when that fire chars that stem, it creates that flavored smoke that hits your food. Mm -hmm. So I really encourage people, don't ever throw them away. You know, I even tell people in my class, wrap them up in plastic, throw them in your freezer. Mm -hmm. You have some friends come over and it's like summertime and you want to just do a little appetizer and all you have is like maybe bread. Yeah. Then steep it together. Oh, he's going to do the, he's bowling up now the Moderna oh. Carbonara. So again, we made the Anduja sauce in-house. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Oh my God. So it's it's spicy and salty, but herbaceous with the oregano. Um, and that's uh, all of that meat that you see there is ground up uh -huh. prosciutto, and that's the nub part. And again, yeah, the, um, God. the skin was inside the tomato sauce. And then because it is spicy, we like to put um, an, a sunny side egg up on there because that yolk, that fat, Kaboom. helps to chill out the heat um, and the acidity that's in this pasta dish. What is wrong with you it's people? Insane, that right? Is... <laughs> yeah, so good. Oh, it's a Friday where Captain Vela, Chef Elise Wiggins, Chef Zuri. Um, as I look at this kitchen and, and this beautiful concept, it's good in theory, but also if a kitchen gets behind and starts getting its ass kicked, it can look really awkward. Oh, yeah. It can, and it changes the whole culture and dynamic within the kitchen. With that in mind, because you're built that way, you're built to run that way, how do you, how do you keep this machine running like this? Other, I mean, you can say just the great people, but there's more to it than that. Well, you know, I, I can't speak enough about organization. I mean... And being ready. Or, or being ready, practicing, practicing, practicing. So, like, for example, this spring menu that we do, you know... I work with Zuri, we get the recipes together, then 
we train the staff and we repeat it and we repeat it and we repeat it over and over again. So by the time we roll the menu out, both for the service staff, uh -huh. that they've seen it and tasted sure. it, and the cooks, rolling it out on the menu is, is like, it's no big deal. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're ready. You know I mean? So often I've gone, I've studied under these chefs and kitchens, and it's like the day of, they're rolling out menus and they're mm -hmm. teaching you the day of, and I'm like, that is, I, I, I thought to myself back then, I'm like, that is so counterintuitive, and it, it, we're set up to fail that way. So I refuse to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so organization, I think, is the key. And I'm a geek of per, uh, uh, procedures and execution. You got to be able to execute this kitchen's price set up just that way. Can you just, as Jay Pans, kind of tell how your kitchen's set up here? And, and it's set up for efficiency, I would imagine. Yeah, for sure. So if you start over here, um, what you're seeing right now is what's called the pantry station. The pantry also works on that wood fire grill by, you know, grilling bread for fattoria piatos, which is our version of the antipastis. Also, the grilled Caesars and stuff. So the, the pantry station works really closely with the grill station. So the grill guy also does, obviously works things on the grill, plus the fryer. So any fried calamari, any kind of items, our charbroiled oysters that everybody loves, um, all works on the grill. And now Jay is panning over into what we call the saute station. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's where pastas come from, or you know, pan seared fish, scallops, all that kind of good stuff comes from this station. And then as Jay will continue to go, he'll show you the pasta water. And then after that, the final station over here is um, pizza station. So that's the last one. People love that. Yeah. Absolutely love it. It's a concert, Chef, isn't it? It is. It, I call it um, um, ballet with uh, knives and fire. It's so true. And people, this is the hottest ticket. This, this chef's Ooh. counter, people, I mean, reserve it way in advance and they just love it. You know, we call it dinner and a show. Um, and they just, it's like a, it's like a free cooking show, you know, for them. Yeah. Jay, the one and only date in quite some time right here, huh? That's did right. It's did been it what, five years? Did it work? I don't know what that means, but <laughs> 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 I have no idea. What did that mean? I don't well, know. Did it you, you know, it all used to work back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, all jokes aside. It's how you play the odds though. I don't right? know. All jokes aside, it was a very, very uh, 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 a, the food was amazing. I remember that. But just the experience yeah. overall, uh, 100% awesome. Yeah. I mean, it really is. You're right about it being a show. And I think I almost got hit with a piece of garlic at one point, you know? Oh, and, sure. and, and I'm like, that. that is what I'm here for. Yeah. That's why I'm sitting up here. Yeah. That's right, ringside. It's like, you know. No, seriously. We have, when we put the oysters on there, sometimes the shells will pop and then they're like, they're like yeah. shrapnel going everywhere, yeah. but people don't care. Yeah, give, me like, give me more. Give me more. <laughs> yeah, give me more. You know. Right. Uh, speaking of more, we've got more for you. We're going to break away and come right back. We're going to sit down with uh, Chef Elise, and and uh, I can't wait for this because we kind of have a, a contrasting comparison to what's it like to have a thought or a notion or an idea, and how do you bring it to fruition? Had an interview with Chef Wiggins on iHeartRadio back when there were no video or anything else. We're just talking, and you gave us an idea of your thoughts and your dreams of what this is. I want to see if it's everything you dreamt about. Oh, we're going to listen to a little bit of that. Zuri, thank you so much. Oh, Ron, so, so, you. so Man, thank you. Good to meet you as well. All right, we'll break away. We'll come right back. It is Friday. It's the 26th of March at Captivella. The chef's counter, you mentioned you might want to get in on early. Do you call for reservations for that? You can call or go on um, open table underneath Catavella. Does anybody call anybody anymore? We still, we actually get a lot of calls. Do People you? prefer it, yeah. So yeah. we're we're good with that. Uh, we also have a bar program to come uh, to go through as well. This is a treat for us. It's great to catch up. Glad that we're right here with you. It's great to be here in the living room at Catavella. Be right back in a flash. The Modern Eater Show continues. Hey. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? This is Brother Luck from Lucky Dumpling, for by Brother Luck in Colorado Springs, and I am rocking with the Modern Eater. You're watching them, you're tasting them, you're knowing everything there is to know about Colorado. <laughs> Hi, Charlie from Brews Beers here. Our new Belgian Abbey Four Pack is a mixed package of the four core beers made in Abbey and Trappist breweries in Belgium. So we have a single, a double, a triple, and a quadruple in one package. Now, quadruples are the emperors of Belgian monastery ales. They're dark in color uh, with a dense tan head and alcohol ranging from 8 to 12%. So they're pretty strong. 
Quadruples are very rich and complex with big maltiness, uh, spice, and flavors of raisins, cherries, and plums. Alcohol is apparent in the mouthfeel, but not overwhelming, uh, even at 10.5% ABV. So the finish is long, complex, and dry, and they're great beers anytime, by themselves or with hearty foods. Pick up your Abbey Four Pack at either Brews location, 67th and Pecos, or at Colfax and York, and at fine liquor stores throughout the Denver metro area. Take home some Belgian-style badassery today. the outtake version. <laughs> What's up Denver? I am Chef Natasha Hess and this is Chef Carrie Baird and we are at the Ginger Pig. Check us out gingerpig.com. You can also see us on the moderneater.com. Thanks everybody. It's cornstarch. I know. It's cool. You got me? We back at it? Okay cool. I'm trying to queue up a couple of things. It's really impromptu but this is what you can sit down and, and this can be you. In other yes words. let it be you. And when you sit down you get to take your mask off and that's what <laughs> I love. Oh that's right. I know wow. it's like oh boy I don't I, I'm always working and so I, I Ooh, know. That feels good. What's that like? Uh, Chef Elise Wiggins here with us and we're at Catavella inside the restaurant. It's it's really interesting because there's a lot of tradition that goes along with Italian food, Italian cuisine, and, and, and Italian ambiance here. As we look at your living room, or living room, <laughs> room. It is a living room, it, honestly. It, yeah, it really is. It truly is. Um, talk about just the setup and, and how you want people to feel with the experience when you come in. Yeah, so my whole experience um, in Italy when I was studying with all the different chefs and winemakers is that there's so hospitable I, I mean I, and I'm southern and so that just hits my heart when mm -hmm. someone has um, you know has this amazing hospitality that draws you in like I had to be careful to say you know I like your apron or I like your decanter because they would give it to me I mean they would just constantly give it to me and I I was just so shocked by that um, and so I was like I I, I want to continue that I mean I always knew that I want people to feel welcome you know but the true Italian hospitality that I learned you're not, you're not just a guest walking in. You're a new family member or you're an old friend we haven't seen in a long time. Um, and that is key to the culture here at Cattivella. And I, I, I always say it's like 50% of our secret weapon, amazing food, and then you have to have amazing hospitality where people genuinely feel um, that they're welcome and invited and wanted back, mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely, so the minute that you're greeted to when you're seated, yeah. to the food, you, so is there, you want to have a drink real quick? You yeah, yeah, absolutely. I yeah. mean, like, what, what's your order of what you? <laughs> I know we're trying I'm to. Like, <laughs> so when people come in, um, yeah, of course, the first thing we want them to do is to feel, um, get a cocktail. Yeah. That's that's part of the Italian the, experience. Yeah. You know, like they they they. And it's so funny. Like if you go to Milan or any of these other um, cities. They'll get a cocktail or a drink, a glass, whatever. Then they'll go outside into the street. They don't, it's not like here in the United States. You know, they can walk up and down the street and just chat. Mm -hmm. And they do after work or whatever. And it's just their start. Usually they start off with a cocktail and then they'll work their way into having wine with dinner. Um, but it is such an, an, an amazing and a, and a community kind mm -hmm. of uh, feeling um, that I wanted to have here. And that's like obviously the first thing that we do when someone comes in, it's like, Let's get you. Let's, let's get you a, a drink, a yeah. cocktail, something effervescent. It's really a part of mental health as well. Everything you just described, it, it truly is. It's, yeah, it's a part of that unplugging, disconnecting, and then being a part of family and community. Yeah, and then there, it's like the gloves are off. Let's do whatever we want to yeah. do at that point. Let's oh no, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, and it's. It, it, you know, and it's interesting, too, because I've always felt it in here, but with COVID and now people are able to dine, you know, they're getting their mm -hmm. shots and they're coming back. It is such an amazing vibe in here. Like, it, it is truly my drug. You know, I, I, I don't do drugs anymore. I was like really young when I did them and yeah. stupid, but Been there, it, is, it is. Yeah, I yeah. mean, and I think almost everybody in this business sure. does um, or did. Um, but um, it is truly my drug now. And when I see people are just genuinely enjoying themselves or they just grab me and they say, I want you to know how much I love this place. Mm -hmm. And then I grab them back and I'm like, 
I want you to know how much I love you. And then I'm just coursing with this yeah. adrenaline, yeah. this drug, you know, and I'm just well, like, can't get enough. Well, because that's what you, you and your team and your family work so hard for, that apex. Yeah. yeah, and they all feel it. Like, you know how good it is? Yes, guests for t to be so happy and genuinely happy. Mm -hmm. But then my staff, yeah. when they feel oh. it, they're getting the drug too. Uh -huh. It it is such a high <laughs> that like it, 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 it's like being yeah. on an Olympic team. I yeah. think to me, sure. you know. But you're you're making people happy through food and service, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know. I I feel like I've won the lottery. You yeah. know. Well, and it's the ultimate compliment too when someone walks through that door. I mean, think of how many options there, oh. there are. Right? Oh, there's a ton of competition. I always figure if it's important enough to write on a wall, it must. But it's it's not in English, so I don't know what do you, <laughs> what what what's on the wall right yeah, there. Yeah. So these sayings, like the one that's behind me, is like, you know, where in ancient kitchens, you know, they always have the the best flavors, you know, mm -hmm. and so it just means really like the best practices, you know, the oldest repetitive you know, best ingredient practices equals the best food, you know? And so, you know, like some of these dishes that I have here when I study, they're from the 14th century or the 16th or 17th century. These are old, old dishes that are on my menu that I'd like to talk about. And so that, that saying that's on the wall reflects that. That's fantastic. Yeah. So uh, this is dated 611 of 16. Wow. Five years ago, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. And um, mere, merely a dream. I think the stages you were at at that point in time were working with your architect. Yeah, yeah, it working was happening. Working with funding and banking. Yes. And betting on the roll. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, I put, you know, it's so funny. When you brought this up, I, I was Let's thinking. listen to a little. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Let's listen to just sure. a bit here and see if we can... Of course, I, it turned off since I did that. Um, tell that story while I cue this up, if you would. Yeah, so um, at this time that he's talking about, I was literally, you know, I quit working at um, my old restaurant and 100% focusing on um, getting the funds in place and in order um, to, you know, make Cat Tabella my dream. Embark, yes. Happen, you know. And um, I don't know, do you so have it queued up? Do you mind giving us the scoop on uh, what you've got in gestation? Yeah, well, the, we haven't um, finished signing all of the papers. Or more I should say, I haven't yet. So. Pesky paperwork. Yeah, I'm waiting, I'm waiting now. You know, attorneys are involved and stuff, and so everything's got to be, like, dotted and crossed, and it goes kind of back and forth and stuff like that. But, the, I mean, the deal is official. It's going to happen. Um, I'm just waiting for all of I'm hoping by mid next week we'll be done and I'll be able to officially announce it. So, well, yeah. uh, listen, yeah. uh, there, there's also things called unofficial announcements that, <laughs> yeah. that we don't have to hold you to, but it'd be really nice. So, if we let, let's do this, if we had a crystal ball and we were looking into a chef and we envisioned a restaurant that you would want to open up, <clears throat> what would it be like? Well, <clears throat> I. <laughs> I don't want to give this away, but I, I will say there's lots of restaurants, lots of content um, that I want to do. Um, and this, but this first one's going to be really special. Um, it's kind of like a, a combination of cooking methods um, that apply to, I'll just I'll even say Italian cuisine. Um, but I, I don't want to give anything else um, any more away because I really want it to be like, you know, super surprising. So. Sure, super surprising. So let's do this. Uh, w when would you like this restaurant to open? In the fall, <laughs> ideally. In the fall? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and so what's your favorite part of town that you would want to put a restaurant in? <laughs> um, I would say Stapleton right now. Very cool. There's a lot of stuff coming up there. And uh, Justin yeah. Brunson, who, um, you know, Masterpiece Kitchen, so which is fantastic. Just a little the bit. company, and even prior um, to that, um, I've opened seven. I and so it just, I've never owned it, you know, and now, now I'm going to own it. So. Cool. Um, Concepts <laughs> and restaurants. How do you go about naming a restaurant? This is the part that just really... You know, I don't know. It just makes me giggle. And I can't say it now. But um, I, for me, I like to uh, capture something that, that reflects me, uh, my personality, and the personality of, of say, my food. Um, so I think that's usually a great approach. Um, but usually a name that 
short and quick and memorable, so it stands out. It's going to be different from everybody else's. Um, those kind of things, um, I think, really help a, a restaurant name um, stand out. It takes a while, too, and especially for the branding. I'm <laughs> now that, sure you came up that with was, a thousand names. And there. I'm going to pause that. That was just an idea, so you yeah. didn't have any idea. Cattavilla is what it should have always been. Right? Yes. I mean, and. Yes. You know, I. I um, mean, that gives me the bumps. That, that, to that. that was so cool. I was, and it's so hard for me. I have such a big mouth. My mom always told uh-huh. me, never gamble. Oh, always, I tried Because you to. will give it away, yeah. you know. Um, but I was, you know, highly encouraged until we finished. We were, we were kind of negotiating on contract at that time. So we couldn't divulge, you know, a whole lot mm-hmm. on, you know, what we're doing until it was finally signed. Mm-hmm. And that means I really got the space. There's nothing worse than you hear, oh, so-and-so is going to do yeah. something. And then it falls flat, right. you know. Well, um, yeah. I mean, my fried chicken place is like one of those examples. Um, <laughs> okay. but, and we can talk about that. Um, but, yeah, that's really cool. It's such a nice, um, I can feel my, we'll my excitement in well, that. Well, let's think of all the things that have gone, that has happened in five years, right? Yeah. First of all, in, in Indelible and your own and, and Catavella. I mean, what yeah. a, it's you. It personifies yes. that. It's who you are. Yeah. And naughty girl is what it means. Yes. Right? Yeah. And, and just the naughtiness. And, and it's not the act of being naughty, but it's the mindset. It's, the, it's what goes on. It's just that rocking the boat. Yes. I'm not afraid to do that. Right. And so, like, for an example, um, there, people are like, well, how is this, how is Cattivella naughty? Well, most Italian restaurants kind of do similar things, you know. Um, you always see lasagna. You always see ravioli. You know, those kind of things. And they're all wonderful. But where I break the rules, and this is where Cattivella comes in, is that I have gone for over 30 years studying, looking for dishes and recipes that nobody's doing back here in the United States. I don't want to do another spinach ravioli, you know, like I don't want to do that. I want to break the rules that way because there's so many amazing dishes in Italy that people just don't know about. It's you know? breaking barriers and ceilings. Yes. And that's naughty. Yes, exactly. Exactly. That's why we, but you and I, those are the reasons why we went to the principal office all the time. You know, I did. (laughs) I actually did. But it was usually because I was talking. But we were always the ones that you knew would someday be successful. Right. And don't hold back that creativity and and don't hold back the naughty side of you, too. Truly. And I think that that's the message, right? No, follow and and, and, and passion. You know what I mean? Follow And I know that that's just really cliche, but it is so true. And I, I tell these these kids so so much and if I mm-hmm. lecture a culinary school or whatever I, I tell them you really really should and must follow what really turns your crank mm-hmm. no matter what that is mm-hmm. um, because there's I don't work here I have fun here yeah. like I there I can't there's not enough time in the day when I sleep I dream of this yes. like I cannot wait to get in here like, I know. and so when if you're a chef and you're working, you know, 13, 14, 15 hours a day, more than that, mm-hmm. if you don't love it, it will break you. It will, it break, will break you. you along know? with anything. Yeah. Really, it will it's, break you. Exactly. And not being broken. So we have a lot of opportunities to break this, especially this past year. One of the things, <laughs> and I won't bore everybody with trying to thumb through it. I should have written it down, but I didn't. Not organized like I should be. Um, you, you intimated to me in this interview that, and this, uh, keep in mind, this is 2016. I've got everything on the line. Everything. Yeah. All my cash flow. Everything saved up. Everything I could possibly do. I'm betting on this thing. And you know what? There were two things that stuck out. And I, I'll get the audio for it. But you said, I believe in what I do. And I believe in myself. And I have the expertise to make this success. Oh, you just, you just gave me chills. Um, yeah. And I... I am, um, let's talk about the money part. <laughs> I literally, in order to get my loan from the bank, and I'm a 100% owner, I have no investors. The only quote investor is the bank, and they believed in me. Uh-huh. Um, but I literally almost couldn't get the loan. The last little chip that I had to put in after I liquidated my 401k, after I put a lien on my house, Mother. was exactly, was my car. That was the deciding financial factor for me to get this loan to do Cattivella without anybody or anything, again, minus the bank. And so 
at the time, I did not realize that I literally could have lost everything. Yeah. I just... Your blinders I, were on. Uh, oh, big time. But you knew that there was no other option for you. No. I right? Was, I felt so confident. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a winning formula when I was down at, you know, Panzano downtown. Mm -hmm. I built that clientele from nothing. Mm -hmm. um, and I created something. And I, um, if I didn't have the follow, uh, follow the groups that follow me there and the support there, I would have never done this venture. But because I did, I was like, I know that I'm going to continue to blow it up and Catavella. And so after I opened it, it was interesting. It wasn't until like a couple of months in and then I had a regular from Panzano come up here and she was like, Elise, do you realize what you've done? And she like looked me in the eyes with this like this fear and was like, you, you could have lost everything. everything. Yeah. I mean, how did you do that? Sure. And I, it wasn't until then that it like, it hit me. And I was like, she's right. Mm -hmm. I would have lost everything. No car, no yeah. house, no retirement, you know. I think you knew that risk though, from the short time that I've been able to spend with you, your confidence transcends. And it's something, if you did lose everything, you knew that was an option, but you also had the confidence, I'll drag myself from the depth of the earth into dirt, I've done it before, I'll do it again. Yeah. And and it's like, that's a possibility, I'm not going to go, but your blinders were on to go I forward. honestly did well, not add, think about that. Let's add the COVID layer now and all the other th challenges throughout the, now five years, if you would have said, I have to go, would you still have done it? Yes. You would have. I, I would never oh change God. a thing. We were rocking so well yeah. before COVID. I mean, we just... We were so busy that um, I love our, um, um, I think he's the C, uh, or the VP of the company that actually owns the buildings. I own the business on the inside, but they actually, Evergreen actually owns the, the, the buildings. Sure. He believed in me so much that he helped uh, me expand this extra room for private dining because we were just so busy. Um, and right before COVID hit, I had like $75,000 worth of business mm. for private dining mm -hmm. built in there and COVID just, wiped it all out Good just night. like that like um and then of course everything was just heading downhill right after that um so here we sit on this march 26th of 2021 it's a it's rare but the smiles are starting to come back regulations yeah. are starting to loosen yeah. vaccines are starting to find their way into yeah. arms mm -hmm. things will you you and you're oh. you're someone who looks around corners all oh, the yeah. time so as we finish this segment and then we'll go into the next segment let's talk about what you've had to put down talk about your your trailer real quick yeah. which that was yeah, I mean, when this first happened, almost this time last year, I saw into winter. Mm -hmm. I saw what was going to come. And so I was like, okay, I need something that is affordable, you know, that people will get several times, you know, a week um, versus something special, you know, a higher end price point. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go on the cheap. I'm going to get um, a food trailer and I'm going to park it out here right by Catavella. So I use Catavella as a commissary, all that kind of good stuff. So I found a really cool 1962 Shasta. She looks like a big old chicken. So I did fried chicken out of her. That was the concept. And I went through that whole thing with the city, the whole packet. You know, they asked to have an aerial photo from Google mm -hmm. to say exactly where I am and it has to have the streets and everything. So I literally went through the whole process mm -hmm. and said, it's going to be here. It is for a permanent spot. Mm -hmm. I needed to sign affidavit, which I got from the owners of the building. They were all in support. I crank it out one day and I remember pulling up the next day and this woman um, walked across the street that lives here in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And um, I see her scowling through her mask and writing down. And I was like, oh, she's going to complain, but I'm good. So uh, she complained to the MCA, which is our neighborhood, um, um, whatever, whatever you call it. I don't know. Uh, anyway, it's a neighborhood kind of like management. Monitor. Like the HOA for your neighborhood. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, we don't. And anyway, so I showed him the affidavit and I showed him my plan and everything. Like that. And they were like, he's like, okay, you're good. Well, she goes around that and then goes to the department of right away and complains to them so they come rolling up literally the next day and he was like you know i'm gonna ticket and tell you 
And I'm like, no, you can't. Here's my affidavit. Here's my all my mm -hmm. parking permit and everything that I've got signed off from the health department, the fire department, everybody I'm that good I was to go. I'm good to go. This is a private space. And he said, but we're going to overrule that because your space is right beside a public road that the city of Denver owns. Mm -hmm. So you can't, you have to do like all the rest of the food trucks and move every two hours and be gone for, and you can't park overnight. It's not viable. I fought it for three months. Mm -hmm. I worked my way up from council member all the way up as far as I could up to the mayor's office. And they're like, the most we'll give you is 90 days. Well, that does me no good if I establish the business and everybody's loving mm -hmm. it. And then I go back to having to move it yeah. every two hours. Yeah. So I gave up. So now she's for sale. Um, it makes is it me for sick. sale? She's for sale. And she's a beauty. She is. She's <laughs> there, adorable. She is. Did, I, did I tell you what uh, the lady said? No. To the, so the, the woman, when I asked him, I said, was it a woman that complained? And he said, yeah. She said, it's a trashy um, fried chicken trailer that looks like it belongs on Colfax with the hookers. Oh, my God. Can you believe that? I mean, she's adorable. She's adorable. And uh, I don't know if you guys have photos that you're showing or whatever, yeah, but like, some she's just so cute. And everybody that sees her loves her. And, and people around here, like all the neighbors here in Stapleton were like, mm -hmm. let's do a petition. We'll sign it. Totally. You'll have thousands of people sign yeah. it. I even offered that to the city. I'm like, if I get this petition, they're yeah. like, nope. Yeah. Thanks bureaucrats and politicians. Yeah, during COVID, <laughs> right? Yeah, really cool way to support. Um, and so water under the bridge now, move on. Yeah, you know, she's brand new, she's under warranty, all the equipment in there is brand new and under oh. warranty. So I'll make, a, I'll make some good money on it, mm -hmm. not, not a tremendous amount, but I'll make good money off of yeah. her. Uh, and the concept's always mine, it will never be taken away. So I'm hoping at some point something will shake up for another brick and mortar, and I'll be able to give life or continued life to Little Yellow Check. I'd say we keep, you know, we. Yeah, 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 hey, we can do it. Let's we. keep it as a monument. You know? <laughs> you know, really. Yeah. It, it signifies so much more. Oh, it does. You know, and it's so funny when that woman said, you know, it belongs on Colfax with the hookers. I was like, this isn't stripper chicken. I'm not popping <laughs> open the door and having a pole dancer. Although I think there's a good concept there. there. There's, yeah, you, you had imagine? something there. Lady. Then you have to ask the people, right. do you like, are you a breast man or a leg man or a thigh <laughs> man? What are, which are you, you know? Uh, I, <laughs> If only we could have the real conversation. This is Catavella, right? That's right. This is Catavella. All right. We're going to break away. We're going to come back. There's a lot more to restaurants than just delicious food and great conversations. You got to have cocktails and wine, right? Yeah. Yeah. T Let's talk to us about what we're going to see next. Yeah. So Marco, speaking of Italians, and I always like to brag that like Catavella is where the Italians um, really want to dine and they do. And Marco is actually from um, Milan area, Ooh. just west of Milan. And so again, all Italians are born with passion of wine and they know everything and anything that you can imagine about it. So he is now a tremendous asset with our family and um, he's gonna be speaking about some new wines that he and I just collectively Ooh. brought on. Well, so. what a treat. Yeah. Wow, okay, yeah. that's gonna be coming up next. And what's really cool is, it, and I haven't met him yet, I'm about to, it's Marco. Yeah, Marco. I bet yep. people come far and wide just to see Marco. They do, they love him. <laughs> they love him, absolutely. You'll yeah. see why, that'll be next at Catavella right now. And what a great conversation we yeah. just had. Yeah, Greg's always so good with you. Thank you so much. We'll be back in a flash. The Modern Eater Show continues. Hey you guys, Jay here with the Modern Eater Show. Thanks for watching. Don't forget about our YouTube and Instagram channels. A lot of killer content over there. Throw us a subscribe on YouTube. Throw us a follow on Instagram. And thank you for supporting TME. We couldn't do this without our amazing sponsors, so let's check them out right now. Very proud to be part of the, the Modern Eater. And uh, chefs, restaurant owners, any food service operators, you know, I know right now that uh, delivery and carry out is bigger than ever, and we got you covered. Uh, Cambro uh, has a full line of uh, delivery and carry out items. More economical options are expanded polypropylene or EPP, a uh, nice insulated container. Uh, the ProCard Ultra is really versatile. It's a great unit because you could actually store cold products down here, hot products up here. It's all 120, there's no refrigeration worries. It's all thermodynamics. Just let us know what your food service challenges are, what it is we can do to help you out, and there isn't anything that we can't do for you. So uh, hope to see you over here at our facility in Park Hill soon and uh, stay safe out there. You know everybody, with several million dollars of hard assets here, insurance is very, very important to us. Ewing Levitt, 
covers it all. Machinery, building, workman's comp. Ewing Levitt's got us covered from the floor to the ceiling, from our alley, even to the street. This divider, this press, my cooling conveyor, my oven. Ow, ow. Ewing Levitt covers our counter stacker and our employees too. If you need insurance, take it from Little Rich at Rockalitas. Call Ewing Levitt, they'll get you covered. Hey, this is Keegan from D-Bar in Denver. You guys might find it difficult to stay in touch and stay up to date with the ever-changing culinary scene in Colorado. It's almost impossible. Just tune in to Modern Eater. These guys have their fingers on the pulse of what's happening in all of the food and beverage in all of Colorado. They're behind us. They understand the idea of shopping local and shopping small. To support them, you support us. Okay, it's great to be back here at Cataville. I have to tell you first, before we get back to the program, about our guys, Jeff Rourke and A-Plus Beverage Solutions. Uh, family man, family owned and operated, that's who we like to do business with. 20 years in the business, he's been putting tap installations in all over the place. He can add lines too, and maintenance is really, really important right now. Pouring inefficient beer, Jay, what are you doing when you pour inefficient beer? Don't pour money down the drain. Just get a hold of Jeff Rourke from A-Plus Beverage Solutions. He'll add a line, water, wine, nitro, coffee, uh, whatever you need him to do. He can do that for you, and you can also fine-tune it. From the biggest projects, we've seen him do Monarch Casino. Wow, football fields of glycol. It's amazing what this man can do. Give him a call, 720-272-3809. One more time, 720-272-3809. Jeff Rourke, A-Plus Beverage Solutions. Back to the show. Thank you, guys. Okay, Chef Elise Wiggins. Yes, I'd like to introduce you to Mark. Thank you. Mark is our new manager, and um, he's um, our, our wine expert, all things Italian, because he's actually from Italy, just uh, west of um, Milano, right? Right, yeah, southwest of Milano. I come from uh, this small uh, little town called Voghera. sits at the foothills of this beautiful area called Oltre Popavese, great land of wines. Unfortunately, not very well known in the United States, but hopefully with the help of Elisa, we'll be able to bring this kind of little, you know, hidden gem of Italy, one of the thousand hidden, hidden gems of Italy, back to the, uh, to the United States. So that's I where I come it. from. Wine confuses me so much. <laughs> it really does, from price points to flavors to regions. One thing that I always throw out there to wine expert, and I ask it every single time, and I get a different answer. What's the difference between a variety and a varietal? Uh, it's such a great area. Uh, probably... They will require a lot of conversation. Is a varietal the region and a variety is the type? So a varietal of grapes would come from a particular region, and when you're in Italy, that yeah. would be the varietal yeah. of wine, those the grapes, variety and then be the variety would be right, versus Absolutely. Cabernet versus Merlot, the grapes. The I like grapes. to learn about wine, and you got, who, who is your mentor in wine? Well, my mentors. Your mentors, ones, collectively. Yeah, mentors uh, has been like... Uh, Probably one of the most influential, influential has been like uh, a friend of mine is a wine distributor here in Denver. He comes from Siena, small little, you know, actually very close to Panzano, mm -hmm. where Elise used to work. So uh, he has been one of the greatest one uh, that, you know, because of our friendship, uh, he was able, you know, after hours, you know, give me always like a little like, uh, you know, uh, details about wine. I think that definitely, you know, when you do things over and over again every day, I mean, Mistake after mistakes at the table, then, you know, when you get to know the things. Yes, so. <laughs> I, I love the conversations. And, and please help me. But don't too. fool me. Don't let them fool you. Like, Italians are born with a baby bottle with wine Little. in their mouth because, <laughs> yeah. like, they're taught. It, it's just in the culture. It's entrenched in the culture. Like, mm -hmm. young kids know about the wines that are grown around mm -hmm. in their region. They just know. It's just a passion of anybody that's from the country of Italy or even Sicily, you know. Because some of the best grapes, I mean, yeah. to be proud of. Oh, my goodness. If you've got a Super oh, yeah. Bowl winning team in your backyard, yeah. you're going to yeah. be happy I mean, and proud uh, I don't know if you can say that legally. I mean, 
we're on video, so plus that happened in Italy, but I was drinking wine at the age of 12, probably. Oh, yeah, 13. yeah. No, no. You know, at, the, care, at the yeah. table with my parents, of course, like watered down with some water because you cannot stand, you know, like a Cabernet at the age of 12, but, you know, with a touch of water. So that's how you get started in Italy. Mm -hmm. Regions all over the world, and yeah. I know Italians are particularly um, prideful of their wines. What would you say st is stands out with Italian wine? that is like something that w we have that nobody else has or just that's colorful that you well, really like just i a think uh stands out the fact that we were very smart very entrepreneurial since like i would say the bronze age on understanding how lucky we are of having such a land uh i mean if you look at Italy on the map you can see we're surrounded by like three different kind of sea yeah to really kind of ocean, so like the currents, the air, the salt in the air, that makes a difference. The terroir. Uh, terroir, the soil, and, 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 and you know, it's a very long peninsula, so from north to south, uh, there's probably, I don't know, maybe 1,500 miles, so in those 1,500 miles, you have like different, different soil, uh, very volcanic area, so definitely everywhere there's a volcano, the soil becomes like fertile, so, uh, you know, we've been lucky on, on the sense, and I mean, Italy was, used to be like a, a Greek colony, and used to be called Enotria, which translated means the land of wines. So that tells you awesome. everything. Awesome. So well, <laughs> great response. <laughs> so as far as, far as wines go, uh, I'm, I'm pretty good at spirits. I'm pretty good at beers. I've uh, got a decent palate, right? Wines confuse me, and here's why. It's just like, okay, well, why is this one $60, and why is this one $180? And, and and so it's like, oh, well, this one, here's the vintage of the year. And that year, boy, there was it was perfect conditions. The weather was right. The sunlight yeah. was perfect on. Is it truly that subjective to where it comes down to just how the growing conditions were for the particular grapes and, like, the strains? Like, if you have a horse that's a winning horse, and it's that lineage of horse that goes along, make wine make sense to me. Right, yeah, you say something very, very, very good. Like, it's like, you know, the kind of like soil, the exposure to the sun, where is compared to the sea, how many miles from the sea, like the Alps, and all this kind of condition. But then also the 2,500 and probably more years of like growing the soil, mm -hmm. making sure that, you know, you have the right fertilizer for the soil, that you do the right growing techniques. So that's why probably we, we, we make the best. I mean, I love w mm -hmm. wine programs are absolutely paramount to the success of a lot of businesses, right? Uh, restaurants. Yeah. Your wine program, particularly happy for Italian restaurants seem to be in like, we're going to only carry Italian wines. Well, I felt like I was the only one that did that at first. Uh -huh. Now that there's more people, because y you see, you still see um, California wines, uh -huh. um, some French, you know. Um, but I was adamant, you know, we're only doing Italian wines and a lot, not all of them because the list has changed. I have visited and worked and met the owners and learned about the wine mm -hmm. and selected them to be on the list um, when we first opened up Cattivella. So now it's evolving and, you know, I'm, I'm letting uh, him well. go and do his <laughs> thing because he's, he's bringing these amazing like little niche wines okay. and we have like a niche market. I don't uh -huh. like big producers. I don't like that. I mean. It's great because it exposes the, the uh, Americans to you know great Italian wine, but there's so many more that are just boutiquey little wines that you just can't you don't see in um, a liquor store. You know you can Naughty only wines. get it here. They're not <laughs> again rule breaker. I don't want to do what I, I love. It. I don't like to follow the the, feel, the herd. I, I want to like. It. I'm going to take this area, yeah. and even if it's the long route, uh -huh. I'm going to do that, right? right? So here we are. Uh, yeah. Set it up. So new things. You like to try new things. Yes. But there's also, what are the stables, though, of Cattivella? Like wines that you know you're going to get here. Or do you have any stables, or are they constantly rotating? How do you do that? Well, again, like, it's all subjective because, like, so, for example, Nebbiola, that's from the Piemonte region. Like, you know, we'll never not have a Nebbiola on there, but... You know, vintages change, wines change, and so sometimes you want to kind of change directions and a little bit. And dishes change too, right? And dishes change, absolutely. And so one of the beautiful things about Marco is that, like, he'll sit and have a particular dish, because we're working on right now changing um, the, the wine list for the spring. And he'll have a dish, and he'll eat it, and be like, and then we'll taste some more wines and be like, this, I know I'm going to go this direction, this particular, like if it's Pinot Grigio or whatever we're going to do, or Nebbiola, he, he's going to go, okay, I want to do this, but let's get some in so I can try them all together. And he literally like picks the wine to go with that dish that's going to be coming on the new menu versus, okay, I'm having a dish tonight. Well, I'm going to pick a wine that 
will pretty much will go with your dish. Mm -hmm. He's hand selecting these to make sure wow. they are perfect with each dish. Savant. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. All right. What are we, this is new? So, yeah, you want to show them? Yeah, That's sure. So, we have a couple of new uh, introduction on the menu. Uh, so far, they're like, uh, they're not yet on the list, official list. We're waiting for the new menu to roll out to then update also the wine list. So, let's start probably, you know, uh, on a scale from the lightest to the strongest. So, I would say that probably the most important wines that we're going to bring on the new menu, uh, they're going to be a nice Pinot Grigio and a Chianti Colli Senesi. Love it. Okay? So this nice Pinot Grigio, uh, I mean, if there was one word that would like encompass everything that is this bottle, I would say elegant. Okay. Uh, when I say the word elegant is because this, this wine, I mean, uh, you know, comes from, from this uh, region of Italy called Friuli Venezia Giulia. So it's like northeast of Venice. We're looking at the foothills of the Alps. Okay. So this area is like is amazing. I mean, we're looking we're looking li like spectacular scenery. To get a little here. brisk there as well, so it's locking in those flavors. From uh, is there a high range of temperature throughout the day to the? Uh, yeah, the definitely. Change? Yeah, definitely. There's uh, especially summertime. Especially summertime, there's a lot a lot of like you know temperature you sure. know changes. Fluctuation. And uh, now I don't remember exactly particularly the elevation of the wine, but definitely this this area of Italy because we're like looking at almost at the Alps. Yeah. Definitely is elevation. So the elevation and the climate, the soil, is perfect for growing Pinot Grigio. So will I get a crisp? Do uh, you mind if we taste it? Yes, yeah, yeah. Why not? As you yeah. can see, we already like went you ahead. You know, yeah, <laughs> got sure, got ahead. Know, yeah, we, we got it. But we tried this yesterday, and what you know, again, you know, Marco takes like our, our very limited wine list because we don't have a cellar that can hold sure. you know 300, 500 bottles. But you know, he felt a need to like find a Pinot Grigio that was more elevated, like he says, you know, and usually a Pinot Grigio can be like, you know, very tart, um, minerally kind of, you know, for a white, bigger in character and like people kind of to love that and know it. But this version is, it's truly more um, um, complex and um, multi-note versus you know, Pinot Grigio, you usually kind of like, I call it a whiz-bang kind of thing. It's like, okay, I know what I'm getting here, and it, it's great for a, a you know, happy hour by the glass or whatever. But this is very different, so. Wow, I mean, yeah, right one of the the it's got me going, you know, yeah, that's a good sign. One of the other things about this company is that the Sant'Elena, they're like a family-owned company. They're like certified organic. Uh, they do things like the proper way and uh, and definitely the, the, the cooler climate that this region has mm -hmm. allows the tannins on the on the wine and the sugar to develop at the proper time. There's not an explosion of, of, of sugar in the wine, so develop slowly throughout time. So that gives you a nice, like, complex, robust structure to the mm -hmm. wine that stays constantly from the beginning to the end. And when I say beginning <coughs> to the end, from the moment that the wine touches your lip to mm -hmm. the moment where you finally, you know, you, you swallow it, it stays constant, like very elegant. What's uh, interesting about this wine to me is the sweets kind of, of battling the dry, and it, you, you can't decide on one. So balance. You, you because perfectly balance. Am I wrong on no, that? No, no, no. Yeah. That, that's the beauty of this is that, like, when I tried this yesterday, I was like, oh, my God, you know. And this is what I'm talking about, this man. <laughs> He's just this, like, okay, we need to have, yeah, we've got the entry level, a Pinot Grigio that everybody's always thinking of. They always have this in mind, this, this citrus kind of acidic, you know, you don't get a balance of sweet, but you, this is balanced, you know, this is like, okay. I wanted to decide on sweet, and I go, nope, I can't do that. And no. I want to go, no, it's more it's dry. And then balanced. I go, well, what I do know is it's crisp. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very crisp. And uh, boy, that, that's a very good. So what, what would you uh, suggest as far as a menu item for this, the pizza? May yeah, I? I mean pizza. Can I scallops? Of course, please do. <laughs> I mean, I can't just take your word for it. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Again, you see how that that the pizza laid flat and how thin it is. Yeah. Again, that's indicative of a Napolitana dough. It's very thin and it stays flat. Yeah. Now try this, it with the wine. This is when you get into the crease. This is why you go out to eat. This is what we've missed so much with our pickup and curbside delivery. You're, and, you you're know, right. And when I talk to, this. yeah, when I talk to people when they dine in here, I mean, literally their faces almost split in half because they're like, they're grinning ear to ear. And when I, I, I talk to them often, I hear, this is our first time back. We both got our shots and, you know, we're finally dining. And I was like, welcome back to normalcy. Yeah. And they're welcome like, back. we just didn't realize, we took for granted dining in a restaurant and being social. Yeah. 
And now people are getting it back, and it's just, again, we, we talk about this whole drug thing, but it, it is like a drug now for people. Yeah. And I don't think they'll ever take it for granted again. When I honestly. talk about mental health, yeah. it's very true. Mm -hmm. um, it's what that did, the oils from the olive oil. It yeah. It itself, and then that cutting through the, in your tongue, and it, your palate's already trained. Yeah. It's just, and this, you wash it through to get you on going for another bite. So good, right? It's delicious. That's yeah. fantastic. Do we have time to talk about another of the red? Yeah. Um, so Marco, not? you want to talk about the next one? So the next one uh, comes from Colli Senesi. So it's, a, it's a, like a Chianti Classico, but... Excuse uh, me. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah no, go you're ahead. Gonna, uh, you're going you're gonna to enjoy your pizza. So probably I should probably grab another glass so that way we don't... Yes, please. Um, and you can talk as you walk. Or there you go. So these are 100% Sangiovese grape. So Sangiovese is the best grape for every Chianti. Okay. So every Chianti has to has at least 80% of the wine has to be made with Sangiovese grape. And then the remaining 20%, 80 80%. Okay. 80%. And then the remaining 20% is kind of like a trade secret of every producer. They blend with whatever they think is the best. So this one is 100% Sangiovese grape. Sangiovese grape is the staple of Tuscan area. Tuscany, everywhere you can grow Sangiovese and it's gonna go, grow amazing. Uh, Sangiovese is the, is the same grape uh, they used to make the famous Brunello, Brunello di Montalcino. So Montalcino is a little town in Tuscany, made 100% with Sangiovese grape. Every, every corner of this planet know about Brunello di Montalcino. So this wine is a Chianti made with Sangiovese grape. So it's the same like as, as Brunello. So it's a so nice, traveled listening. you know, it's, a, it's such a, an elegant wine. Uh, so uh, I'm trying to find a word to describe this wine. So I use the word elegant for the Pinot Grigio. Well, let so us help. <laughs> I think probably because of the complex, because Open of the structure, video. I would say this one is sexy. Oh, yes. Sexy. See, Catabella is right. flying again. <laughs> this is a sexy wine. Uh, it's called Colli Senesi simply because in order to produce Chianti Classico, you have to produce within a certain area. A small area could be maybe 10 or 15 miles round. So this, this wine actually sits at the, at the, at the, at the door, at the, front, at the front door of San Gimignano. It's a little town that everybody knows. Everybody that goes to Tuscany knows San, San Gimignano. It's like a, such a little ancient village. It's awesome. So this wine comes from the area. 100% Sangiovese grape. And uh, one of the things I like about this wine is that it's very similar to the Pinot Grigio. That it stays constant, constant throughout the dinner. Like doesn't evolve too much the flavor. Uh, it's a great, they call it the, the pasta wine. That's the best wine to you know, to pair with uh, with all the with all the uh, pasta dishes as well, like you know, everything basically like the, is based with tomato sauce, which is our menu. This one is the, the perfect pair. Oh my goodness! F so first of all, I have to know because you are yeah, we are open for business coming yeah. in right now, as yeah. you can tell, and they're anxious to get in here. Um, we're, so we'll finish up here, are we sure. and then get over to the bar. Yeah, absolutely. So I just want to have you a little taste of this. Uh, so uh, the sexy wine, uh, Chef Elise. I want to ask you. Um, how do you, and that's very important to you because I've talked to you about sourcing and ingredients. You said it could be the best in the world, but if you can't tell the story, if you're not able to make that nobody knows, right? I mean, yeah. Truly. So how do you convey this wonderful, like, can you sit down and have dinner with me and talk, just talk? Why not? But how, how do you do that for your guest? Is there a way? Well, I mean, we, <coughs> excuse me, we try and take as much time as we possibly can to and and one thing that we do not do is we don't order take like we connect with the guests and so for example when they talk to me and they're like well what should we have and i'm like well they're all my children let's talk about what mood you're in to, you know are you in the mood for something that's seafood are you wanting something pasta you know do you want to be a little more adventuresome like and i let them kind of guide me it's like and choose then your ending yeah. Build your own story. Yeah. You're going to guide. Exactly. And it's no different than, you know, with the wine pairing or cocktails, you know, that experience. And people have come to trust us. They know that I'll have people tell me, just just pick it. Just send it. Just pick it. Just do it. You know, mm -hmm. um, it just I think it takes a while to build that trust. So with wines uh, and that's really primarily your job is not only to bring the great ones in, but to express why you chose them, right? right? How does that work when somebody wants to order wine? Do you visit the table? Do you break down the barriers? Wines can be a little intimidating for folks, but if you can capsulize what you just said to us within a couple of sentences, 
boy, that really, really, and it makes the wine taste even better, right, too, because right. I'm looking for those things. Well, right. One of the, also, the, the, the things that we do is that... Cheers. Salute, huh? Salute. Oh, I guess. Um, yeah, better grab one. Yeah, we got to make sure. Oh, I know. Where's I'll grab one. Right so here, sir. Oh, it's right here. Perfect. There you go. Um, I love your watch. Thank you. And especially when we bring a new wine in, we'll open up a bottle. Chin and chin. then chin chin, I'll do it different. <laughs> um, we'll go around and just taste people on it. You know, we'll have the bottle open. Awesome. We'll bring a glass of wine and just a tiny little taste, kind of like what we're doing here. That gives him the opportunity or even some of our staff, you know, the servers are allowed to do that and encouraged to do that, mm -hmm. you know, to where it's like, you got to try this. And especially after we do a lineup and they freshly taste it, they learn the history. It's, it's top of mind. Um, so them going to a guest and letting them try it, I mean, hands down, we oh. sold, what, two cases the first night we did it, just like in a couple hours. I need that in my life immediately. Yeah. That is delicious. It's a, it's a very fresh, it's a fresh wine. Very, kind of very young to be a Chianti. So yeah. it's like the, the pasta wine. A, every kind of pasta, you, you use the word intimidating. So this actually is an is a icebreaker. When you're a guest that you're not very familiar with Italian wine and you see this kind of Chianti, you're going to fall in love forever with Italian wines because it's very approachable. I would say humble. It's a sexy, humble wine. Doesn't need to be decanted. Great it's ready, ready, ready to be served. Like you open in five minutes, opens up, and you got like all these like nice plum and raspberry and cherry flavors that goes it's perfect exactly with this kind what of I would even bring chocolate into this one as a, 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 a wine that I would serve with a delicious chocolate and nuts. This Everything and anything. Fantastic. You should try the, the and do your Moderna, I, I huh? I mean, I have to, right? Yeah. How, so approaching this dish, I would just go ahead and get that egg everywhere, right? Of course. Just crack it open, let it ooze, <laughs> then get some and, of it. And do your thing. Again, and it's Friday at Captivella. Chef Elise Wiggins taking the time out in your kitchen. I don't know. How are things going so far? Great. Just they're they're pros. If you're worried about things when you th then you have a real problem. It's yeah. like this is what we've trained for. Yeah. No, right? practice, practice, practice. Yeah, I wouldn't I don't know why I needed another I wouldn't even open the doors if we weren't ready, you know. It's All right, you guys. So am I going to be the only one who eats? Yeah, them? you're Probably. the only one. Probably. Yeah. Although Marco might eat it later. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's been there a little bit. Yeah, a little cold. Has. But uh, who hasn't had delicious? Yeah, that's how you help out. Friends <laughs> and family jump in there. I always tell you know, my, my guests, guys, don't trust me because I, because I speak. Trust me because I'm Italian, guys. When an Italian person tells you that the food is the right one and the wine is, it has to go with the kind of food. And, and, and truly, it's your taste. It's it, what tastes good to you. It's what you like at the end of the day, right? Uh, all you can be is a great tour guide right. and uh, enhance the experience and try and lead people down the path that they want to go is right. really yeah. what you need to do. Yeah, exactly. Right. So it's definitely a little spicy. This job sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Come get dinner. Yeah. <laughs> need to come get dinner. Right. Describe this wine, two sentences, in Italian. In Italian? Yes. Okay. Uh, un vino giovane, molto fruttato, molto versatile, uh, perfetto per la pasta. Abbiamo, ovviamente siamo un ristorante italiano, quindi abbiamo un sacco di piatti di pasta disponibili. Uh, se volete un vino che è molto, uh, diciamo, amico della banca, del conto corrente, questo è il vino perfetto. Uh, un bicchiere 12 dollari, una bottiglia sotto i 50 dollari, perfetto. perfetto. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself. Marco, thank you. Thank you, Greg. I appreciate uh, it. Yeah, continued success. Thank you. Great having you here. Thanks for coming. Thanks. Absolutely. <laughs> Can we break away, come back, and we'll yeah. a couple cocktails? They're cocktails about to get next. cranking. we got to get out of their way. Why? Because they're open for business. you got to come down to Captain That's right. Bell. Experience it for yourself. Ooh. Little heat little spice. coming. <laughs> uh -huh. Those huh? Calabrians. Oh, yeah. boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Uh -huh. This is the time of my life right here. Okay, back in a flash, we'll mix up some cocktails. Who's going to be our... Uh, Alex Middleton, our lead bartender. Great. That'll be next yep. on the Modern Eater Show. Hi, I'm Amber with Strohauer Farms. And I'm just here to remind you that the best potatoes are grown here in Colorado. Goodness elevated. Thanks for watching the Modern Eater Show.
Hey, Zach Kreider here, Colorado Mills Sunflower Products out of Lamar, Colorado, your only local source grown from a local crop to produce a local oil for local chefs. You can find it at Shamrock Foods, What Chefs Want, Seattle Fish Company. Uh, let me try it one more time, then we'll see. Hey, restaurants, we're glad you're reopening from Colorado Mills Sunflower Oil. We'll see you soon. <laughs> First, we partner with the best farmers in the world, and then we tell them, we will take it all. Process whole spices daily, blend custom spices to order, keep it fresh, safe, and flavorful, all so that you can get back to doing what you do best. So whether you're a restaurant, a food manufacturer, or an at-home cook, be sure to visit The Spice Guy at www.thespiceguyco.com. Hey Modern Eater fans, I'm Don Trobo with The Annex by Ardent Mills, and I just wanted to give you a heads up about some of the great things we've got going on locally in the state. We're headquartered right here, and we're working with farmers in the San Luis Valley to bring you amazing Colorado quinoa. It's just like the South American stuff, but grown locally. We've got transitional wheat flour that's grown by farmers in Colorado and surrounding states who are in the process of, of turning their fields into organic. So we're taking that transitional wheat and turning into flour, and now it's available for you to cook and bake with. And last but not least, we're now cleaning grain berries in Denver. So things like spelt or wheat berries uh, or pearl barley, those are things that we're now doing right here locally and are available to you. Can't wait to share it with you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jeff Nations from Aspen Baking Company. It's really important right now to support local. That's why I support the Modern Eater. Now, back to the show. Hey guys, Alex Armitas over at Sam's Number 3 Glendale. You want a Bloody Mary? You want a cheeseburger? You want a breakfast burrito? Greek salad? Bacon gyro meat? Chicken souvlaki? Barbecue ranch salad? We got you covered. Come down and see us. One more time. Try it again. Hey guys, Alex Armitas over here at Sam's Number 3 Glendale. Now get your ass to themoderneater.com. Thank you so much. Modern Eater, we love you guys. This is Amber with Northern Colorado Potatoes, reminding everyone that potatoes grown here are truly rooted in love and rooted in a long history of being grown in this area. Early 1900s reports show that this was either the largest or one of the largest potato producing areas in the nation. Other states have had some amazing branding, but don't forget we have all your favorite varieties and more you love to cook and eat, including russet. Support local potatoes, you won't be disappointed. We started Meridium Spirits because we love the way that spirits and cocktails can bring people together to socialize, to bond, to have conversations. Well, right now we've got some big conversations to have. Coop Vodka and Coop Gin are available at liquor stores across the metro area, but if you can't find us or would like to have us behind your bar or at your restaurant, send us an email, info at meridiumspirits.com. We know things are a little different these days, but think of us the next time you're planning a virtual happy hour or a socially distant picnic. And keep an eye on our social media, Coop by Meridium, for all the latest and greatest. Hey guys, it's Caroline Glover. I'm the chef owner of Annette out at Stanley Marketplace. Citrus is about to be in its prime. I just want to thank everybody for showing so much support to small local restaurants in this really hard time and you're watching The Modern Eater Show. <laughs> I'm fine with that. 
Okay, back to Catavella on a Friday, March 26th, and wow, this month's flying by as we head into spring, and regulations starting to loosen up. Can't be at the bar yet, but the bar program's going. Chef Elise Wiggins, I uh, have to thank you so much for having us here today. Are you kidding? The honor is always mine. It's always such a good time you with just, you guys. You give us so much knowledge, and, and not only that, but levity and fun in what you do. Oh, the craft thanks. that you do, you can truly enjoy, and I appreciate people that, that really like that. Thank you, absolutely. I want to highlight also um, Alex Milton, our lead bartender that we have. Hi, Alex. He's going to be making, you know, because it's not just it's not just wine and food, but also cocktails and libations. You and so um, Alex has got some uh, new uh, fun things up his sleeve. So I want you guys to check that out before before you go. But thanks again so much for having us. Much Greg. love. Always good to see you. you got a yes. restaurant to tend to. I know it's a Friday night, so it I got to get to it. Thank but, you, um, Chef. Talk to you later. Fantastic. Chef Elise Wiggins right there. And uh, sticking around with us is Marco and the bar program. Kind of hand in hand, but you have to wear, uh, work in tandem. But it's good to meet you, of Alex. Of course. Nice to meet you, too. All right. So first of all, before you start here, cocktails that have to be in a bar or, yes. or a restaurant. I say old-fashioned is one that you have to old-fashioned, have. Old-fashioned, def- definitely. What else do you have to have? I would say you have to have some type of gin, gin drink, for yeah. sure. Uh, some type of spritz. For the people who like to sit on the patio uh-huh. and sip sip their drinks, um, and then maybe like maybe like a frou frou drink, maybe some something like um, a Shirley Temple with vodka <laughs> for pe- people <laughs> who like you. that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then what about a martini? Of course, of yeah. course, gotta have a martini. Always mar- martini Manhattan's galore. Yeah. And now those kind of drinks are there. You can kind of cross utilize them into other creations yes, right yes you have some new creations here that's where you yes. get fun outside the box yes. a little bit i do have some new creations so first the first thing i'm going to make is going to be a elusive 75 it's going to be a take on the french 75 um it's actually going to be with this gin right here that's going to be our elusive gin we like to call it it's going to be made with um, the elusive, three types of elusive flora from the mountains. Wow. This can be a good drink. So yes. I see it's shaping up. It's not your daddy's gin either, okay. though. Okay. So I just did a little bit of simple syrup, lime juice, and some gin. Okay. I'm going to give that a nice shake. Strain this into the glass. Look at that color, right? Love it. Tap it, get all the goodness out. Then we're gonna top it with some Stella di Notti Prosecco, of course. Why would you not? Beautiful. And then last but not least, some rose petals. Look at that. Look at that. Fantastic. Too many of those, and you'll end up in the mountains with the roses, right? <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> and, and this is when, you know, um, food, wine, spirits, cocktails, all go hand in hand. But I have the terrible duty to give this a shot. Oh, yeah? Dangerous what I have to say about that. <laughs> so the name of that cocktail again? Elusive 75. Elusive 75. I'll have 75 of them. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Or 74. Yeah. This is delicious. What do you have next? Okay, next I have um, something called the... Alessandro Magno. That's uh, a name <laughs> that just came out like probably in the next couple of minutes. Something that definitely we're going to roll in the spring menu. Very fresh cocktail. It's going to be amazing. Alex is going to tell you more about that. But right. Alessandro Magno means Alexander the Great to honor our great bartender, That's Alexander. That's fantastic. Right? And so mint, starting yes. with muddling mint. Starting with some muddled mint because we have some lovely chartreuse here. Uh, it's a bit of a niche spirit, if you will. Um, not everyone is a huge fan of it. It's been uh, hitting lately, though. Yes, yes. So I'm trying to turn a few more people on to that this spring. Um, with some simple syrup, lime juice, elderflower, some cucumber vodka as well. Woo. Who came up with this baby? Freshness in there. I came up with it myself. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, I kind of guess you have to. It's <laughs> named after you, right? Exactly. <laughs> Who um, came up with it? Oh, Jim. And then, <laughs> <laughs> then, of course, some chartreuse. So is this what Alex would be sipping on 
Um, yes. Yeah, this is, is what Alex would definitely be sipping on. Okay. When working on the trademark of this uh, cocktail, so probably would be Alessandro Magno, you know. Okay. Registered. I don't think it. it'd be flattering to have it. Other, <laughs> you know, why not? Let it catch on, huh? Oh, we're busting out the big, big cube, cube, huh? Yes. Got to Alexander the Great, right? Only the best. Okay. And then you're going to spank the mint. Bring those flavors out. Somebody asked me that the other day. Why, why do you smash the mint? I'm like, well, can't you? It brings the oils out and elevates the drink overall. In honor of you, yeah. fine sir. Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> I feel like I need to, like, <laughs> I <don't>, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. The mint, first of all, just get, get you right where you should. Yeah. And then the flavor is so, have you tried this yet? Oh yeah, you at least oh. four, maybe five, how many? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, yeah. this is a great drink. What's up with egg whites and people loving to work with egg, egg whites? Egg whites, they get a nice foam on top, so it kind of adds another layer of depth to, mm -hmm. to the drink because drinks always have fla flavor and whatnot but when you add an egg white you get texture in there too i thought those drinks were just for people that don't want to go out and eat they just want to <laughs> drink cocktails and yeah. they need some kind of nerve Try, trying to get their protein in <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> absolutely yeah. wow this is fantastic and this is I I any given night if they're ordering a cocktail yeah. from captain bella chances are alex is exactly 100 <laughs> percent. how many cocktails do you think you do in a night at least 200. Really? At least 200. How do you yeah. keep up? Um, Red Bulls. <laughs> Red Bulls? <laughs> yeah. And you got to know where everything is. Exactly. Where your station is. is your sa are you set up for speed here? Um, I am set up for speed and presentation for you guys. Yes. What if... <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. What if somebody comes in and says, I want a Coors Light? Coors Light? I turn them on to some, something else. <laughs> we have so many other things besides Coors Light. Time and place for everything. everything. Right. Coors Light but is not the time and the place. <laughs> <laughs> Great answer. <laughs> I love it. And then um, what about coffee? Are you serving coffee, coffee? drinks? Or? I do. I could work at Starbucks. I do cappuccinos, lattes. You do? Espresso. Now, do, yeah. you, do, you, do you get upset when it's like you're in the um, rhythm? You can yes. Nobody. <laughs> yes. Jay, Jay said yes. yes. I do get a little <laughs> upset, but as yeah. long as the guest is happy, as long as my foam is nice and tight, I, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love it, you guys. You got, it all, got yeah. it all going on for you. These cocktails are fantastic. The food's delicious. The wine. Thank the you, The people. Sir. You guys are so great. Thank you. Alex, thank you so much. Thank you. Marcos? Thank you, sir. Appreciate all right. It. It's Friday night. It's dinner time. I bet you can't wait till people can line up yeah. again. Huh? <laughs> yeah, it's going to be fun. Do you remember how to talk to people? <laughs> Barely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. We're going to wrap it up no. here from Cat Tavella. What a great time. And uh, Jay's going to walk through here as I kind of just wind it down. Um, I'll tell you what. That's the reason why we come out and see folks right now. It's one thing to do it in our studio kitchen, but you just don't get the full feel of how everybody's getting their service back together. It's not an easy thing to pull off, and it's really something that you orchestrate it and uh, orchestrating, they do well here. So for everybody involved, Jay Parker, you did a great job today. Marco and Alex, Chef Elise, Zuri, Sosa, and everybody else. I wish I knew everybody's name because I'd give them recognition. This is what it's all about, hospitality, right? Correct, Food sir. service. We love it. Okay, uh, what did it say? Friday, enjoy your weekend. We'll be back at it on Monday. Have yourself a great weekend, and whatever you do, support local and go see that restaurant. That It means the world to them when you walk through your doors. Take care. We'll see you next time on the Modern Eater Show. Ciao.